Hey y'all. Okay. Let's bring in, for the first time I saw like the thing pop up for what I'm going live for. Hey y'all. How y'all doing today? All right, happy Sunday. I know it's seven o'clock on this fine, fine Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening, whatever. So I'm not gonna keep y'all too long. Just gonna come in here and just slide in here and slide y'all some tips, okay? A lot of people, whether you're starting nursing school this um, for the first time, this is like your first semester, um, whether you are like in fundamentals and this is your first semester or if you're second, third, eighth, 27th, doesn't matter. <laughs> um, passing med surge is a must, okay? And it may sound simple, and easy to say, but there are definitely, especially if you haven't done at least med surge one yet, med surge two, you kind of like, you, you've learned along the way, but med surge one, look, I'm giving you all the tips you need in, on how to pass med surge, uh, because I, I struggled. I struggled, so you don't have to. So I just want to come in and give you guys a, a little bit of tips, some, some, some small tips tips and tricks and hacks that you guys can take in order to do your best <laughs> in med surge. Let me see what y'all saying. I'm taking med surge now. Second exam is Wednesday. Um, future ER nurse, what um, chapter are you on? And not like numerical chapter, because I don't know what chapter nine is, but like, what are you, what are you, is it cardiac, endocrine, neuro, musculoskeletal, GI? Uh, <laughs> what are you, what is the specific topic within med surge? Um, that you're studying. All right, guys. So hello, hello to everyone here. <laughs> Nurse Jess, I need these deets. I got y'all, boo. Definitely have your ultimate nursing school bundle by my side, period. I recommend that. I'm in this message now. We just took our first exam. Um, someone's doing GI. We're doing cardiac right now. I'm in neuro, GI. Cushing's acid-based thyroid. Vascular system. Okay, great. Okay, so this past week we just we did our med surge one slash pathophysiology one um, week as far as our back to nursing school little campaign that we're doing. Every week we have a different topic um, in a content area that I give you guys like tips and um, tricks as far as how to remember certain details. <laughs> uh, real twin mom, seriously. Med surge is so annoying, but it's so interesting, all right? And a lot of people um, will be like, oh, do you have, okay, yeah, okay, I'll say that. Do you have anything on med surge or do you have anything, you know, what are some tips and tricks as far as like passing med surge? And the thing about med surge is like, it's not this like one-stop shot. Like it's not just it's, it's honestly a class of its own. It's like its own umbrella of its own. Um, within med search, that's basically, you're taking everything that you've learned from fundamentals, pathophys, uh, health assessment slash physical assessment, pharmacology. You're taking all that knowledge and kind of applying it to the disease processes and the disorders that you're gonna be learning in med search. Now, med search is um, classified based on the system, okay? So, Give me all two different. All right, so this is my intro to med surge book. All right, this was my this was my book from when I was in nursing school about nine years ago. <laughs> okay, um, so yeah, this is my med surge book, and for comparison, let me show y'all my uh, maternity book. So this is my maternity and pediatric book. Look at that. Look how th uh, thick this is compared to uh, this thing. Side by side. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. Now look. Look at that. Okay. There's so much for you guys to learn and digest in MedSurge, which is why it's one of the toughest and the more um, difficult subjects and courses within nursing school, whether you're an LPN or RN, okay? <laughs> we gotta learn the same things, all right? That's another conversation for a different day. So whether you are LPN or RN, you need to be here, okay? 
Now, for med surge, like I said, it's classified based on the system. Okay, so whether you have, um, usually med surge starts off with you learning like your fluids and electrolytes, um, acid base balances. You're, you're learning the foundations so that when you learn the actual disorders, you're able to like connect the dots. Okay, so you start with the basics first. So you learn like uh, nutrition, you learn um, patient care, communication, all that, all those good things. Nurses, the nursing process and critical thinking. You learn all those within the first like few chapters and then it goes into like the actual physiology part, all right? You usually um, start with, uh, see here it starts with cancer, then it goes into neuro, then respiratory, then um, hematologic and immunologic, um, then cardio, then uh, digestive disorders. Um, urolo uh, uro urologic <laughs> disorders, so urology, um, musculoskeletal, endocrine, reproductive, integumentary, aka skin, um, disorders of the e ears, nose, eyes, and throat, mental health and illness, and that's usually what med surge covers. Um, I will say though that, um, no, I'm not gonna say the last part. Yeah, I'm not gonna say the last part. Um, but yeah, those are usually the classes within or the courses and the chapters within Med Surge. And uh, each of those chapters are about about 100 pages. <laughs> about, so you have 100 pages as far as your cardio, then you have 100 more pages for like endocrine. And it, it varies. But that's why I'm always gonna say, yeah, I always say these lives. Um, but that's why Med Surge is so difficult. Okay, now when you get into maybe med search two or when you've at least taken at least one of the med search exams, you start to kind of catch on to to what to how to study for med search, how to um, filter out the fluff and really remember what you need to know. All right. So if you have not taken your first exam yet and you're about to, I'm not even I'm not even going to hold you. OK, <laughs> I'm not even going to hold you. If this is your first med search exam, I'm, I'm so proud of you if you do well. I'm so proud of you if you do well. Usually the first exam is usually the worst, but that's OK. <laughs> that's OK, because after you take that first exam, now you know a how like your professor uh, is going to give you the rest of the test now you know the different things <laughs> to kind of look for because I'm telling you studying for med surge is different than studying for your anatomy tests from high school or even like your college anatomy it's totally different in nursing school because the focus isn't on you just knowing the content the focus is on you making sure yes you understand the content but you know how to apply it in order to make sure that your patients and you are safe okay client slash patient safety is the name of the game okay so with any of these disorders no matter what the topic no matter what the um, actual system making sure that patient is um, safe and um, knowing why certain things will cause certain reactions those are the type of things that you have to like learn Aw, oh, thank you, Jabria. It's worth it for real. I had to take a screenshot with that. Thank you so much. That was so nice. Um, your nurse book templates are very helpful sorting out the fluff. Absolutely. I think if you get the concept, you'll pass instead of trying to remember the content. Thank you. Absolutely. All right. So that's what I mean. That's what I'm trying to convey when I say um, after the first test <laughs> is usually when you start to like, okay, now I know what to look for. Okay. Ow. I just gave myself a paper cut with this med surge book. You see how med surge just causes you nothing but blood, sweat, and tears quite literally. I know. All right. So to help you guys, as far as how to, um, sort out the fluff, a couple of people already said it. So within my nursing school bundle, hold on, let me show you if I can have it, if I have it here. I'm gonna get it here. Within my nursing school bundle, I have um, my study templates, okay? <laughs> my study templates that I um, give you guys, the blank ones, but there's also some filled out ones for an example, but I swear by them and this is why. Okay, I'm gonna bring one up. Hold on, wait, 
Nope. Wait, wait, where'd you go? Boop. Okay, I'm gonna bring it up. All right, so these, this is like the nurse book template. Okay, now these templates, you probably see them like Etsy, Pinterest, different types of templates. You're all, they're gonna say the same thing, but just the delivery and how it's formatted, it's gonna be different. Depending on the seller, depending on the creator, it's gonna be different. But the basics are gonna be the same. All right, so this is what you need to know as far as um, studying for med surge. Okay, so let's go ahead, since a lot of people are taking cardio and we just got finished with cardio, slash endocrine um let's go ahead i'm gonna turn to a cardio chapter really quick well the cardio chapter and then come up and then no let's do endocrine i'm gonna do endocrine all right so i am flipping through to an endocrine okay <laughs> to an endocrine disorder one second oh here we go Okay, great. So the one that I just flipped to was like thyroid and parathyroid disorders. And specifically, let's talk about hyperthyroidism. Hyperthyroidism. All right. So this is your nurse book. Now, for any of you guys that's about to take endocrine, I have a sweet endocrine study kit coming out. Um, hopefully next week. This coming week. What's today? Today's the 18th. So yeah, within the next week, okay, um, I'll be coming out. I'll be dropping an endocrine guide. Now, if you have the Ultimate Nursing School bundle or the third, the second semester, second or the ultimate, I even though I recommend ultimate, you have um, these filled out templates of your common med surge disorders that you like. You definitely need to know, okay. Um, since you guys are here. Already, I'm gonna give I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you guys like a little sneak peek into what we're learning. I mean, into what we're going to be um this the the new endocrine study kit. All right. So like, but like I was saying, um, if you have the Ultimate Nursing School bundle, if you go to where it says MedSearch One and MedSearch Two, those are your common MedSearch disorders in the style of that note of that um nurse book thing that I gave you now behind this whole nurse book thing I came up with this like concept honestly in like high school okay um I needed a fun way y'all know me I love learning fun if it's not fun don't sign me up for it I can't do it um I needed just a fun way of presenting information and learning information um so I created I pretended that each disorder would had its own Facebook page Okay, um, and on that Facebook page, you know, usually on anyone's Facebook page or let's just go with Facebook, you have like everything you need to know about them at, at a glance, a snapshot, I should say. Usually on a regular person's Facebook, you know, you have their like, uh, you have something in their bio, you have who their friends are, you have a couple pictures, you have your basics so you can get a, a, a an idea of who that person is. So I want to take that same concept and apply that to MedSearch um, slash nursing school just in general. So all the disorders and the disease processes that I need to know, I put them on this specific um, template. Now, this is what it says as far as, let me see, let me bring it up, actually. Hold on. What am I doing? Yep. Let me bring it up so you guys can see. Um, um, wait for it. This is study templates. Study templates. Let's go ahead and get our study templates. I'm going to bring one up so y'all can see. Mm, not that one. Let's bring up. Nope, let's do, okay, here we go. Let's bring up and let's do this one. I'm gonna bring up the blank. Okay, so this is a blank copy. All right, so in this actual template, this is the stuff that you definitely need to know. Whether you use my template or somebody else's template, 
doesn't matter. I suggest mine, especially if you're a visual learner, just because it makes it fun. It's not just regular boxes, it's themed. So it helps you um, stay entertained and it keeps your attention longer, all right? Now, you need to know of any disease process, you need to know the pathophysiology behind it, okay? And as you can see, these boxes are not that big because you do not, you already have a plethora amount of um, actual disease processes and disorders to learn. Taking that a step further and then just highlighting the whole chapter and just trying to fit every detail ever within, you know, this specific uh, template or when you're learning the template, it defeats the purpose. It's go you're going to get overwhelmed and you're most likely not going to retain everything that you need to know. Okay, so this template is to help you guys eliminate the fluff and just write what you need to know. Okay, you need to know the pathophysiology, all right? And when you think of pathophysiology, that is the explanation why, okay? Why does this person have this disease? Or why is this disease happening? Why is this process happening? So remember I said uh, hypothyroidism? Wait, let me just give you guys this one. Boop, 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 doo, doo, doo. Actually, let's do let's do di. Okay, yeah, let's do this one. So let me go ahead and more export current page. Image. All right, I'm gonna show you guys what I'm thinking, and and you and this is a a sneak peek into exactly. Um, what we're going to be, um, what the actual new study kit's going to be. All right. This is a page out of the new study kit. Okay. So if you've seen it first right here, hold on, let me give that to you guys. My fault, my fault, my fault. All right, here we go. Choose a different assets. Okay. Can't really kind of see it, but that's fine. All right, so <laughs> can I put this back? Nope, I sure can't. That's fine. Whatever. So let's take diabetes insipidus, for example. All right. Now, if you're doing it based off of my uh, cheat sheet, I have what the disorder is. For here, we're going to do diabetes insipidus, okay, which is really hypo secretion, below secretion um, of ADH, okay? Now over here in that lit, where you would see someone's profile pic, I show you guys kind of like a, because we're visual learners here, kind of like a visual of someone with diabetes insipidus, what you would see or how, how you would associate that. So diabetes insipidus, you have someone that's urinating a lot and then urinating dilute urine, okay? so. Diabetes insipidus, you can think of it as DI, di, all right? With diabetes insipidus, you're, di you're diuresing, dilute urine, and you're dehydrated. All them Ds, throw some Ds on that bitch, okay? That's what, that, that's what it is. You're diuresing, dilute urine, plus you're dehydrated, okay? So that's a little uh, memory tip for you guys, okay? Now, um... ADH, what's ADH? You can't see it because of my picture, but it's kind of right there. ADH equals anti-diuretic hormone, okay? Know that. Now let's get into the pathophys. Like I was saying, y'all need to know what the pathophysiology is behind these disorders. You don't have to write a whole paragraph. You just need to know the, the process of why <laughs> a disease is happening. And so the pathophys of this specific disease says um, ADH... Now, since y'all are here, I don't know if y'all have seen it or not, if, or if, I mean, if you've covered this or not, if you have, answer this question. ADH, antidiuretic hormone. Fuck, it says it. Damn, I was just about to say, is it anterior or posterior pituitary? ADH is um, a hormone um, that uh, found in what? Anterior or posterior? But it literally says it right there. It's posterior. <laughs> Series. So whatever. ADH was a hormone um, secreted by the posterior pituitary that controls water reabsorption in the kidney. Okay. 
So remember, the, the disorder is hyposecretion of ADH. If, if the purpose of ADH is to control water reabsorption in the kidney, okay, the, the target organ for this hormone is obviously the kidneys. So a low amount or lower than normal amount of ADH is going to cause excess urination and water loss. Based on what we know about ADH, how it works, what it works on, okay? So you gotta, that's kind of, it's gonna give it, pathophysiology is gonna give you, um, like I said, the why, and it's gonna kind of bring it all, it's gonna connect the dots all together, okay? So now that we know that a lowered amount of ADH causes excess urination and water loss, what are gonna be our signs and symptoms of this specific disease, all right? So we're gonna move over to the next um, category, which you need to know in order to pass med surge. You gotta know the signs and symptoms, okay? Now, you also need to know um, other terms that can be used as far as signs and symptoms, because you won't always literally have signs and symptoms. Sometimes um, they ask you for clinical manifestations. Sometimes they ask you for, um, what's, an, what's another way that they ask for signs and symptoms? Clinical manifestations, um, really those are really the big two, but just make sure you know those, all right? Um, or hallmark, hallmark signs, okay? That's gonna let you know uh, what to look out for, um, how this disease affects the body and how it shows up, okay? So this one says polyuria, which, is, which means peeing a lot. Uh, nocturia, peeing at night. Polydipsia, which means uh, drinking a lot. Dehydration, all right? Um, low urine specific gravity, hyponatremia, and increased plasma osmolarity. Those are gonna be the, the signs and symptoms of this specific disease. Over here, you have risk factors. Risk factors, and I would also say, Make sure you know your risk factors and complications, okay? In your um, med surge book, they're usually broken down into the paragraphs that specifically say um, what it is. For example, this under hyperthyroidism, which is where I am, um, you have the pathophysiology um, right after it introduces what the actual specific disease is. And then it has a paragraph for signs and symptoms and then complications and then medical diagnosis, medical treatment, which includes drug therapy, um, surgical treatment. All right. Um, so treatments and medications. You also need to know after that, this is important. This is what kind of like separates pathophysiology from med surge, your nursing considerations, okay? Based off of everything that you know about this disease, what then do you need to do as the nurse to once again, make sure your client is safe? And um, what specific actions do you need to look out for specific to this disease, okay? Can't really see it here, but weigh daily. Um, educate to avoid diuretic foods, all right? They're already diuresing a lot you don't want them to eat or drink something that's going to make the issue worse or aggravate the issue so educate them about avoiding diuretic foods uh, monitor weight in eyes and nose inputs and outputs if they're going to be urinating a lot the best way to um um i guess assess input and output um would be to weigh them daily okay now, when you're weighing somebody, I don't know if y'all came, uh, if y'all went to this yet, but if you're weighing somebody, um, especially if you're weighing them daily, what time of or what time of day or what part of the day is the best is going to give you the best and accurate results as far as weighing somebody? When you're weighing a patient, what part or what time of the day do you need to weigh them in order to get accurate results? When should you weigh a patient? In the morning. Right. Time of day. In the morning. Now, in addition to it being the morning, is it before or after they take their first void or urination? 
first thing in the morning, absolutely. But are you, in addition to it being the first thing in the morning, are they, um, is it before or after they pee for the first time that morning? Are they voiding or not voiding before you weigh them? You weigh them after they void, right? Because I don't know about y'all, but when I wake up in the morning, especially because usually in the middle of the night, I, I have to pee, but I'm sleeping so good. I'm so comfortable. I do not want to get up to go pee because it's just going to ruin everything. So I hold on. I hold on to it. I hold on to it. Now, <laughs> if you hold on to that, to urine in your bladder all night, that's going to add a few pounds. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's going to add a few pounds. So it's not going to give you an accurate assessment of that patient's weight. So you want to do it after they void. Now, as far as eating or drinking, do you want to weigh them before or after they eat or drink? We know that we're about to weigh them in the morning and after they urinated. But, oh, look, it's time for breakfast. Do you say, hold on, go, let's go weigh you first? Or do you say, go ahead and eat all you can eat, boo. You better, I hop it up and then I'm going to weigh you. Are you doing it before or after they eat? Correct, you're doing it before. Okay, I don't know how you're about to pig out. But <laughs> we're going to weigh you before you eat, yet after you void. Okay, so make sure you know, um, make sure you know that. All right, and that type of nursing consideration, it's like those facts, that's going to apply to any disease process, whether it's DI, whether it's uh, uh, respiratory, whether it's whatever. If the nursing consideration for that specific disease process, if one of them, because the nursing considerations, those are typically recycled, okay? It, it's just actions, okay? Um, monitoring that weight. Th that same nursing consideration applies to a patient that uh, maybe has congestive heart failure, okay? You're monitoring the weight for them too, and so the, the, the specific notes about weighing a patient, that's going to apply all, all across the board. So make sure you know those things because once again, med surge, you're connecting different dots. Okay, so don't confuse yourself, but just know why you're doing specific um, actions as far as your nursing considerations and the best way and the best practices of performing those nursing considerations. Education included, okay? Patient education is real big, especially on NCLEX. They're making sure that you know why you're doing something. And because uh, whether you're LPN or RN, the scope of practice, uh, the doctor and the provider is going to be the person that diagnoses and do all that stuff, yada, yada, yada. But the nurse <laughs> is going to be um, really, we're going to help them implement it. We're going to explain why. All right, so ed educating, knowing your education is going to be real big because NCLEX is going to ask you. They're going to, in different ways, they're going to ask you and make sure you know what to say, what not to say. So that's a big part of NCLEX in nursing school. So make sure you know your nursing considerations and um, your education, your nursing education points, okay? Um, after you know your like, nursing considerations, uh, I think we talked about diagnostics and everything like that. Um, do, 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 do. We talk treatments and medications. Now, treatments, make sure you know um, make sure you know like drug therapy if if that applies, but make sure you also know non-pharmacological interventions. That's really important. Because when it comes to interventions and treatments, you always want to go from the least invasive to the most invasive, okay? Um, taking medications, that's an invasive um, form of treatment. You're, they're putting something foreign into their body. Yes, to help them, but they're still putting something foreign, foreign into their body, which nine times out of 10 is gonna have its own side effects. So you wanna do whatever you can um, to make a patient comfortable or to help manage, not necessarily treat, but to help manage a specific um, issue as best as you can without in like uh, invasive options. So from medications all the way up to surgery, something obviously so uh, uh, obvious as far as uh, being invasive. You want to do things like, as far as non-pharmacological options, you want to do things like um, uh, what's it called? What's it, music therapy? What's that called? What's it called? When you listen to music, 
hysterectomy brain. What is y'all know what I'm trying to say? Please help me. Please help. Non pharmacological interventions, specifically like you listening to music. Music. Please help me because I can't. I'm drawing a blank. Non. Now I gotta Google it. Unless y'all help me. Pharmacological interventions. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, is it literally called music therapy? I think it might be called music therapy. Oh, oops. Okay, great. Yep. <laughs> music therapy. Never mind. I said the, I said the exact, <laughs> I said exactly what it is. My fault. But yes, music therapy. That's a non-pharmacological, think about drugs. That's a, um, a non-pharmacological -pharma intervention. Another thing is like heat slash cold. Um, that's another non-pharmacological invention. Positioning, okay? That's another one. So make sure you do what you, whatever you need to do, both non-pharmacologically and pharmacologically, if it if it applies, okay? Make sure you know what those are. Um, babe. Babe? Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. I just heard things and I was freaking out. My bad. Yeah, I'm on live. My, my fault. One second. Ooh, that scared me, Jesus. My fault. I was watching scary movies earlier today, so all I heard was something rustling in the background and I'm going to pee my pants. Let me tell y'all. This is why I don't do scary movies. This is why I do Disney. Mm -mm. But anyway, so yes, that's something that you definitely need to know. Okay, now, as far as the specifics, let me go back into that. All right, so does that make sense? You need to know your pathophysiology, signs and symptoms, risk factors slash complications, um, diagnostics. How is that disorder or disease process diagnosed? Is there a specific test? Is there a specific lab result that you expect to come up? Um, then go into treatments and medications. We just talked about that. And then nursing considerations slash nursing education. Those are like the main points that you definitely need to know for any and all disease processes slash disorders within um, med surge. Okay. Now, med because I like I was telling you guys, uh, med surge is just all encompassing and it's just so big um you have many you have many uh disorders per system so it's usually broken up into like med surge one and like med surge two depending on how uh, long your program is <clears throat> but those are typical um med surges and like i said uh in addition to knowing these i'm gonna have an exam over this tomorrow over what di diabetes insipidus uh, um another thing when it comes to endocrine specifically um we're gonna talk about endocrine when it comes when it comes to endocrine specifically um how am i saying this a big thing within endocrine is obviously the hormones and the glands okay endocrine um the hormones and the glands but you need to know for a specific hormone, you need to know what happens when there's too much of that hormone and if it's too little of that hormone. So, for example, the hormone for this specific one is ADH, right? So, too much, I mean, too little ADH, aka hypo secretion of ADH, is going to give you diabetes insipidus. Too much. ADH, hyper secretion of ADH is going to give you what? So what's the opposite of diabetes insipidus? What's the opposite of DI? What's the opposite of, um, or what's the, what's the disorder called where it is hyper secretion of ADH, not hypo? Thank you, Real Ken. S-I-A-D-H, or symptom of inappropriate um, sy syndrome 
of inappropriate ADH. Okay, now when it comes to SIADH, once again, it's hyper secretion. Let me show y'all. Mm. Yeah, um, <laughs> that's going to be the opposite. It's too much ADH. So if you have, um, and this is what kind of what, you, what I want you guys to think and how I want y'all to think about these things. Um, about endocrine disorders specifically, all right? Um, if you know that DI and SIADH are opposites, you have hyposecretion and hypersecretion. If you know they're opposites, if you know the, the uh, things about one of them, you're more than likely to know the, the other one because it's the opposite, all right? Real Ken just said, SIADH, all right? Take out that ADH of SI, ADH, and it just gives you SI, right? So now you have SI and DI. Remember I said it's opposite. Hyposecretion is DI, diabetes insipidus. But what can help you uh, remember it is DI stands for dry inside, okay? Why is this patient dry inside? They're dehydrated. They're uh, urinating all over the place, aka diuresing, all right? Um, so they're going to be dry inside. So imagine um, like a, a, a raisin. <laughs> just picture kind of like a raisin losing that moisture and just shriveling it up. Now the opposite of that, you would expect to be, not, what's the opposite of being dry on the inside? Soaked on the inside. All right. So DI can stand for dry inside and the SI and SIADH can stand for soaked inside. Okay, too much. So if uh, somebody with, dry, uh, with DI or diabetes insipidus that's dry on the inside, if that person's a raisin, how can you expect the uh, physical, the physicality to be of someone with SIADH or someone that's soaked on the inside? If DI is dry on the inside and sun, the, next, and, uh, the opposite is uh, soaked on the inside, how can you expect... Um, somebody with SIADH to physically appear. <laughs> Priyanka said big. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Priyanka said big. Absolutely. So if, uh, think about visually, if DI is a raisin, then somebody with SIADH is going to be like a super grape, like just a plump, juicy grape. All right. They're going to be round. All right. They're not going to be dry on the inside. They're going to be round. All right, they're going to be swollen because they are once again soaked on the inside. They're not diuresing and urinating out like the opposite, which is DI. Okay, so if you have, um, since you know that those two are opposites, you can kind of think about opposite signs and symptoms, opposite um, treatments, medications, opposite diagnostics. All right, let's go, keep going with our SI um, example. All right, so. Uh, DI, one of the, uh, 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 yeah, let's get back into the pathophys. So if low ADH means excess urination and water loss, increased ADH means they keep the water. Great job, Shasha. They're keeping that water and they're retaining it on the inside. So they're not urinating. If DI is urinating too much, SI ADH is not going to be urinating at all. If so, very, very, very small. <laughs> but yeah, they're keeping all that urine um, and just water, period, because that's where the water loss. Remember, ADH is water reabsorption in the kidney. Okay? Um, so they're not going to be urinating, and that hormone's not going to be. Um, mm, we'll just increase fluids in the body. Let's just say that. Okay, does that make sense? So when you um, have, especially let's talk about endocrine, when you're going into endocrine and you're learning one um, versus the other, especially when they're opposites, please make note that they are opposites. Because like I said, if you know one and you understand that they're opposites, then you can know that for the, um, you know that the other, the opposites, um, I'm sorry, that the other disorder also has opposite signs and symptoms, opposite um, uh, pathophysiology. Just know that, 
okay? Now that's very, very important because when you get into med search, this is like honestly where your majority of like your select all that applies. This is where uh, this chapter is where that comes in because what they love to do and ooh, please vouch for me if you've been through med search one, been through nursing school at all please vouch me am i lying when i say that when it, especially when it comes to endocrine honestly and indices what they're gonna do as far as your questions um both on the nclex and actually in nursing school they're going to give you a question and it's gonna be like um the nurse knows that um uh a patient has s-i-a-d-h um, when she notes the following symptoms in the client and usually be select all it apply because they're trying to get you. Um, what they love to do is sprinkle in symptoms from SIADH and symptoms from DI. Does that make sense? So you're going to have things like, um, um, urinating a lot, urinating too little, low urine specific gravity, high urine specific gravity. And those things are going to be said in different ways. Okay. And this is what I mean when I say, when I say connect those dots. Um, if some, thank you. So Shasha said, yup. Am I lying? I'm, I'm not. <laughs> so, um, they also love to reword those things for example, low urine specific gravity all right when you see low urine specific gravity you want you to think about the concentration of that urine low urine specific gravity means that the concentration of that urine is low as well if a, the concentration of urine is low it's very dilute okay so what they also love to do, like I said, is to switch out <laughs> what they mean. They won't say low urine specific gravity. Instead, they may say um, dilute urine. It means the same thing. A low urine specific gravity causes dilute urine. All right. So, yes, you can expect to see those things. Um, you can expect to see dilute urine in somebody that has a low urine specific gravity now like i said instead of just giving you straight up they want to make sure you know what or how low urine specific gravity affects the urine and what it's going to look like does that make sense um so for someone that's diuresing a lot that low urine specific gravity is going to cause that urine to be very dilute okay and if urine is very dilute it's going to be like pale yellow, if not like straw. It's not going to smell. Um, what else? Yeah, that's really the big ones. However, in the opposite, in SIADH, you're going to have a high urine specific gravity, which means you're going to have high concentration in that urine. Okay. Now, if you have urine that is highly concentrated, is it going to look like the urine that's uh, not as concentrated and just with a low concentration, it's not. It's going to be dark, like whatever, like mustard dark. <laughs> it's going to be very dark. It's going to smell. Have you ever smelled concentrated urine? Ew. Okay, I don't know who has brothers. <laughs> or sons but oh my gosh concentrated urine smells so bad okay it's gonna have a smell ew just all that so that so knowing that as far as um urine specific gravity due to um the amount of adh that client has that's the type of connecting of the dots that I'm talking about, which is once again why your uh, uh, med search is so difficult. Okay. All right. So, make sense? All right. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Let's go into our next thing. Okay. Now, um, if any of that went over your head, that's perfectly fine. Like I said, the best way to kind of learn and to pick up on these specific things is to practice. And the best way to practice is to take the practice questions. Um, 
whether it's uh, taking the practice questions from uh, NCLEX practice book or uh, coming to NCLEX Jeopardies with me on Thursdays at 7 p.m. on my Instagram Live. Practice makes progress. And as you do those questions and as you um, practice taking those questions, you start to pick up on um, a lot of things. Okay, you start to pick up on wording that you see that's used all the time. Um, you start to pick up on um, um, different interventions and what that looks like for you as the nurse um, and how that looks in an assessment. You start to pick up on those things that, once again, you wouldn't be so privy to unless you went through that practice process. Does that make sense? So practice really makes progress. And if you, even if you read through a chapter and you feel like, okay, I don't get it, my best advice would be to, okay, after you read it, I, I, I personally don't recommend reading it again. Because if you read through it the first time and you didn't get it or um, it was too much for you to retain, the best thing for you to do in order to retain that information and actually comprehend it is to practice taking it in and click style questions okay so if you're practicing with endocrine disorders and you read through the chapter and you want to okay let me make sure i know what i'm doing let, let me make sure i know how to answer those questions you better google <laughs> um endocrine NCLEX practice questions and just start taking a bunch of those if anything, even if you get those wrong, it's going to give you the rationale so then you know why the answer is correct, okay? A lot of people... Okay. <laughs> um, a lot of people... Um... I just read something and it just completely threw me off. Sorry, my fault. What was I talking about? Yeah, a lot of people like freak out like, oh my God, I got it wrong, blah, blah, blah. No. Like I always say during NCLEX Jeopardy, I'd rather you get it wrong when you're practicing than get it wrong on the actual field, on actual game day, on your actual exam day, okay? Up until then, get it wrong all you like, but just make sure that you are paying attention to why it was wrong so that when you see something like that again, you don't make the same mistake twice, okay? You're learning from your mistakes. That's one of the best ways to learn in nursing school, especially in med surge, okay? Make sense? Cool, cool, cool. Um, mm -mm -mm -mm. make sure you know your learning style. Let me take this off. Choose different. Okay, for it. Wait. Sure. Make sure you learn your um make sure you know your learning style, which if you guys signed up for camp nursing school last month, then we went through an activity where you actually, you know, read through the different types of learning and then based on what those definitions were, you chose which one resonate with you more in your learning style. So that as you uh go into nursing school and go into this next semester you now know the best way for you to digest information. If you know you're a visual learner, sitting here and reading your med search book and your med search chapters over and over again is not gonna do much. <laughs> it's not gonna do much because that's not how, that's not the best way for you to learn. If you're a visual learner, then after you read it, I always say, I always recommend reading the chapter at least once, not least, reading the chapter once. If you're not a reading type person, Read the actual textbook chapter once and then supplement that with ways, um, other ways to digest the information based on your learning type. For example, I'm a visual learner. After I read through it, maybe I'm going to write some notes that are drawn out. Okay. Um, maybe I'm going to watch a YouTube video on SIADH versus DI. Okay. If I'm an auditory person, maybe I'm going to listen to like, an audible book or even with that same YouTube video, not watch the video, but just listen to the video as I'm doing something else. 
So you have to pay attention to the way that you learn so that when you are trying to really comprehend certain information and certain topics, you are uh, using an avenue in which it really works for you and how you study. That may not be how the person that sits next to you in class study. That may not be how the smart, the, the one that, I'm going to say the smartest. That may not be how like the, the, the bookworm person in the corner of the class, they always gets the answers right. That may not be how he or she studies, but you're not going based off of that. You're going based off of you. So um, having that sense of like honesty and really figuring out what ways do I study without like being embarrassed and be like, oh my God, it's wrong. There's no right or wrong way to study. Okay. There's no right or wrong way um, to learn information. What What is right or wrong is um, what you do about it, <laughs> okay? If you know that you're a visual learner, don't try attempt to digest information that's just reading. Does that make sense? In nursing school, you have to really be true to who you are and how you how you study in order to um, succeed, okay? Um, like I said, uh, so know your learning style. Practice a lot of NCLEX style questions. Um, my advice, okay, if you need um, uh, if you need different ways to practice said practice exams, um, practice questions, I always recommend either download the Nurse Sam app because we got we have twenty five NCLEX style questions every week. Um, come to NCLEX Jeopardy on Instagram live at 7 p.m. on Thursdays we go through about 10 of them and then we talk about it we go through the rationale um, and when you download the nurse Ham app you get to play and click Jeopardy mobile version so it won't be like anybody talking you'll just have the actual just game in front of you um, answer the question read through the rationale and just kind of have solo study that way um, so that's one way you can also if you have the Saunders book, I'm gonna show you this. Saunders, let me take this off. Stop sharing. Okay, great. If you have the Saunders book like this, whether it's PN or RN, I have both multiple editions. <laughs> Um, if you have this book, this Saunders book, and it's usually the NCLEX pen examination, first of all, not sponsored at all. They don't pay me to say this, but I don't gatekeep. And if, if, if I have something that's going to help you, I'm going to tell you guys about it. If somebody else has something that's really going to help you guys, um, I'm going to tell you about it. Okay. I always recommend using these two supplementally. If you like I said, if you're a visual learner, my study guides are amazing. However, I never suggest just using someone's study guides, whether it's mine or whoever else's. I never recommend just using solely that. You, they're supposed to be used supplementally with your textbook or something like that, okay? Um, so just note that. Now, as far as the this book, NCLEX, well, the Saunders NCLEX examinations, you have the practical nursing version and the registered nursing version. I have both. There is... There's literally two pages that are different. There are two pages that are different. Okay, I have both. I have the RN and the PN. <laughs> it is literally the same shit. It's the same. It is the same. Okay, so <laughs> um, Inside these Saunders um, comprehensive reviews, reviews, this is another great resource for you to cut out the fluff and really focus on the important stuff. Um, what I ultimately love about Saunders is that they have like an online version. Wait, where is it? Yeah, they have like an online version. If you go to the um, the the front page, the mid, the inside of the front cover. You're gonna have a, like a code for you to get on to, to access their online resources. And that's honestly where like the money is. That is the best part <laughs> for me. That's the best part of this book. Okay. You have like, depending on um, whether it's like RN or PN, not the same. You still have about 
Where is it? Which about this one? Yep, forty five hundred. You have over forty five hundred practice questions, um, and it reflects the current test plan. Because the next generation NCLEX is also coming out next year, what they've incorporated into both is that you have current questions, um, current uh, NCLEX style questions, but you also have a section where you can practice taking the different um, and alternative question types for the new NCLEX. Content will be the same. Content will be the same between next year's NCLEX in this NCLEX, the current NCLEX. Content's gonna be the same. DI and SI88 is going to be the exact same thing on the new NCLEX and the old and the old NCLEX. However, comma, what's changing is the uh, question format and how they ask you the questions, okay? There's not gonna be, um, so it's still gonna be majority multiple choice. However, you're going to have different um, question types such as, uh, select all that apply even though that's already in the current one but you're gonna have more of like case study type questions and when you think of case study questions um, those are questions I don't know if y'all um, signed up for week two of um, our back to nursing school but we had a heart failure case study and what that is is basically like you're looking at a mini chart and based on the information in that chart, you have to answer um, questions based on, like I said, the information in that chart. So the heart failure one that we had um, earlier this week, and then we had some um, questions to go along with it. Um, it literally gives you like history and physical of a patient, um, gives you their vital signs, gives you uh, medications that they're taking. And then based off of that chart and what you see, they're gonna ask you certain questions like, you know, based on their pulse that was recorded, their last pulse that was recorded, what would the nurse then do? Like those type of questions. You gotta, your interventions and your uh, your nursing actions are based on the information from that case study slash chart. Um, and that's, they're trying to mimic real life <laughs> nursing. Um, so that, you know, whatever. They're trying to mimic real life nursing. So that's why the style of question is going to be um, changed and more, uh, changing more so into like the case study type questions, okay? What you guys also need to be familiar with is care plans. And we're gonna touch on that um, next week or this coming week, we're gonna touch on care plans. Because one of the biggest things I know, yeah, okay, one of the biggest things for me was, um, uh, knowing the difference between a nursing diagnosis and a medical diagnosis, okay? Um, obviously, nurses are nurses, <laughs> LPN or RN. Uh, nurses cannot make medical diagnosis, all right? And it can sound like, like, oh, obviously, we can't diagnose. Duh, I get it. It goes a little bit further than that. Um, you can't refer to, like, even in your notes, Okay, good. Even in your notes, you can't refer to um, medical diagnoses, especially if it has not been diagnosed yet. So if you have a patient that's coming in and that maybe the doctor has not officially um, seen them or diagnosed them as like, for example, dehydration. Let's go back into uh, uh, diabetes and syphilis, the dry inside. Remember, we are diuresing, dilute urine, and we're dehydrated, okay? That word dehydrated, is that a medical diagnosis or a nursing diagnosis? Comment below. Dehydration, is that a medical diagnosis or a nursing diagnosis? Dehydration, is that medical or nursing diagnosis? Dehydration is a medical diagnosis. I know it probably sounds like, oh, this person's dehydrated. It's not like we're saying, oh, this person has congestive heart failure. Mm -mm. No, it's not that upfront, <laughs> unfortunately. But yeah, it's definitely, dehydration is a medical diagnosis. Now, if 
you as a nurse suspect that a patient is dehydrated. You cannot say, you cannot type dehydration because that's that's a medical diagnosis and you do not have, whether you are in an LPN, you do not have the scope <laughs> to um, diagnose someone medically. But what you can do is do a nursing diagnosis. So what would be the nursing diagnosis for someone? Okay, alert world. I didn't even ask the question yet. <laughs> but what would be the nursing diagnosis of someone that's uh, dehydrated, even though you can't say that? Okay, so let's take dehydrated. This is why you would think someone's dehydrated, right? If their skin turgor is poor, right? Their skin turgor is poor. If um, their pulse is high, blood pressure low, these are signs and symptoms of someone that's dehydrated. But once again, as the nurse, you cannot you cannot put dehydration because that's a medical diagnosis. You can make note of those um, signs and symptoms. Poor skin turgor. Um, if it's like a baby, sunken font nails. Um, what I say, high pulse, low BP, uh, low urine output. All those are signs and symptoms and clinical manifestations that supports someone that's um, dehydrated. But if they do not have that diagnosis, what would you say as far as that nursing um, diagnosis? All right. Uh, no, not risk for dehydration. Insufficient fluid intake, allure, allure, allure world said. Insufficient fluid intake, impaired fluid intake, fluid imbalance. Um, an, a, a big one is um and this is more so what you would this is more likely what you would see fluid volume deficit i didn't see anybody say it but fluid volume deficit that is the nursing equivalent to dehydration you can say fluid the fluid volume deficit up and down that note you just can't say dehydration so that when the provider comes and sees your nursing diagnosis of fluid volume deficit based on these clinical manifestations or signs and symptoms, then they can make their medical diagnosis based off of their assessment, piggybacking off of your assessment. Does that make sense? Okay. Fluid volume deficit is the same is the nursing version of dehydration. Okay. Uh, let's now go to the opposite. All right. Now, Fluid volume deficit would be a nursing that care uh, nursing diagnosis in like a someone with uh, in the care plan of someone with DI or diabetes insipidus. So the opposite, someone with SIADH, um, theirs would be not the nursing diagnosis, but what would be what would be the medical diagnosis of um, someone with SIADH. As far as fluid, not dehydrated, but like damn, I can't think of it. I can't think of it. <laughs> I can't think of what the, the the medical diagnosis would be. What's the opposite of of dehydrated? What's the opposite of dehydrated? refreshed uh-uh <laughs> good night whatever fluid overload thank you thank you fluid overload fluid overload um i'm looking at it. thank you fit actually it's actually hypervolemia 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 is actually the medical diagnosis fluid overload would be the nursing diagnosis Fluid overload would be the nursing diagnosis. So if you have somebody that is, <laughs> don't laugh, June Candy. They said dampened, like what? <laughs> um, <laughs> but yes, uh, fluid overload would be the nursing diagnosis of someone with SIADH. Someone that's soaked on the inside and full of fluid and retaining all that fluid. Fluid overload is the nursing diagnosis. Okay, now... Like I said, the provider will then take that based off of the um, signs and symptoms of somewhat fluid overload, which would be what? 
if we know based on these symptoms, I'm going to give you uh, based on the symptoms that we talked about for DI, which was somebody uh, dehydrated or fluid volume deficit, if we're going that. Um, if the symptoms of uh, dehydration were poor skin turgor, um, low BP, high pulse, let's take those three, what would then be um, uh, three signs and symptoms of someone with fluid overload? Let's, let's break it down. Let's break it down one by one. If poor skin turgor, yeah, if poor skin turgor, um, we're, we're going, we're, let's go opposite one for one. If poor skin turgors for dehydration, what would, what would be for, um, fluid overload? Thank you, Priyanka and Mercedes, edema and swelling. We're, we're just going one for one based off of the, the, um, specific sign and symptom. Poor skin turgor. Okay, so the amount of fluid in the skin, skin turgor, if you have, if you're dehydrated with um, low fluid in the skin, this is going to tint. Okay, this is another thing as far as physical assessment, health assessment, skin turgor. Okay, this is tint, tinting, not tinting, but tinting, like, like a little, like a tent, like a tent. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so skin turgor, if you are dehydrated, when you do this, when you do this assessment, okay, oh, I'm just so dehydrated, y'all saw how mine just bounced back, okay, <laughs> if you have poor skin turgor, it's going to stay like this, I can't make it stay, but it's going to stay like that, because you have a low amount of moisture and fluid in your skin, however, if you have a lot, slash too much, you can expect for that skin, that, that skin turgor, is gonna be tight because you are ed edematous or swollen basically does that make sense okay so yes edema poor skin turgor and dehydration edema and swelling and someone with fluid overload let's go to the next one if dehydration if you have somebody with a high pulse because high high pulse um is a symptom of dehydration what well, what would be the pulse in someone with edema? I mean, uh, fluid overload. Thank you. I was about to say, mm, it's a little bit. It's 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 like a two part thing. Yes, tachycardia leading to bradycardia. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right because you have if you have an abundance of something if you have an abundance of fluid <laughs> um it's not gonna have to move as fast to get to where it needs to go think of it as like traffic <laughs> think of it as traffic Okay, you have a whole bunch of fluid all around. So it's going to take its sweet time to get to the heart or wherever it needs to go, as opposed to, um, you know, somebody being like a like fluid. Actually, think of it as the being short staffed. In dehydration, you have a, sh a, a short staff of fluids. <laughs> okay, so you have um, uh, your pulse is going to be trying to transport the little itty bit of fluids that I got to where it needs to go. So it's going to be literally running like a chicken with its head cut off. Okay, it's going to be, mm, 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 mm. it's going to go fast, tachycardia. However, if you have a sufficient or too many, <laughs> um, uh, too much fluid, okay, you're not short staffed, you are actually, you're overstaffed. <laughs> Everyone's just going to mosey on about, it's going to be a lower pulse. Um, same thing with BP in dehydration. The BP is going to be, um, low and there's always phases because, you know, you have, when you're dehydrated, um, your body does things at first to try to compensate. And then after it, it does not compensate and then it goes to a different thing. So that's why I think naturally said tachycardia then to bradycardia. It's gonna it's gonna move fast until it can't move fast anymore. 
because it's trying to, like I said, um, compensate. But once it, the once that compensation is not compensated, <laughs> then it goes to um, bradycardia. Same thing with um, BP. BP is in dehydration. BP is low. Um, and then in uh, fluid overload, BP would be what? If blood pressure is low in dehydration, blood pressure is what in fluid overload? Go ahead and write it. It's going to be high, hypertension. Make sense? So that's what I mean when I say, you know, when you're studying certain things, um, if you know they're opposite of each other, study them opposite of each other. Um, DI versus SIADH, Addison's versus Cushing's. What's the other one? Hyperthyroidism versus hypothyroidism. If it's opposite, try to learn them um, together so you know which one's which. Which one's low, which one's high. <laughs> All that good stuff. Does that make sense? Mm -mm -mm. That's why when people so they get a bowl of fluid to boost it up. Okay. Okay, natural by nature. Yeah, y'all see how we stare stepping it? Okay, that's why when uh, natural by nature said that's why when BP is low, they get a bolus of fluid to boost it up. Okay, so these all these um, steps, what I was just saying, there there's reasonings as to why it's that way, uh, why we intervene the way we intervene. Just like she said, when we have someone that's dehydrated, what's the thing that you want to do? If they have low fluids, <laughs> um, cause them to have a low BP, getting a fluid bolus is going to, um, once again, compensate for that deficiency, for that deficit. It's going to help their BP go up and their fluid volume go up. Making sure, uh, depending on the patient, of course. That's usually what it is. And, and it also depends on what type of fluid they're, they're deficient of, whether it's blood or like um, like saline, it depends. Um, great job, great job. Um, okay, so what was my next one? One second. So we talked about our tips and tricks. We talked about um, knowing what specific, um, knowing what specific things to to really learn so you can and retain and remember and understand let me not say remember but to comprehend while you are learning each and every disorder um if you do not have the woohoo i'm so glad tell your dad i said thanks <laughs> i'm glad it's super helping you that's awesome um but yeah we learned, um, if you guys don't have the Ultimate Nursing School bundle um, with those uh, study templates, like I said, that is definitely going to help in learning. See, this is what I was doing for SI. This is why I, I can I'm still working on this one. But remember, this is SIADH as opposed to DI. This is what I'm working on. I, I'll let you know more about that. But yeah, so when you're studying med surge, patho, all that good stuff, um, he likes the drawings. <laughs> awesome. Make sure, like I said, you you um, know the pathophysiology, signs and symptoms, causes, risk factors, complications, diagnostics, nursing considerations, and treatments and medications. Okay, that's what you need to know for each disorder. You need to know. Um, Make sure you know how to study for your learning type, okay? Uh, is it S. Bout, Bout her? Bouthner? I'm not sure. Let me know what your name is. Um, but yeah, if you like, like I said, if you like drawings, you're more of a visual person, then this type of studying is going to be the best. Okay, I'm a visual learner. That's why I had to literally draw my notes. It helps me retain and recall. Um, but if you are not a visual person, maybe you're just a reading, writing person, then, you know, after you read the textbook, you can still use this. 
you can still use this um, template, but instead of drawing things, just write it. Like the ones that we have, the ones that I have inside um, the Ultimate Nursing School bundle within the Med Surge 1 and 2, the pre-existing one, that's going to be more so um, written. For example, this one's heart failure. This one's more written than it is um, drawing. Sherry said, I have my patho exam this weekend. It's over nine chapters. It sounds about right. <laughs> sounds about right. So that's why learning how to cut out the fluff and really just remember the important stuff is so important. And honestly, you don't know what's important. You know, as a student, you don't know what's important until like you take the test or um, until someone maybe tells you this is important. You're, you're learning the information. You don't know what study. <laughs> so that's why, um, you know, uh, following and registering for back to nursing school. I'm giving you guys the things that you need to know. All right. Like I said, this past week, we just, today's the end of week two, which we did med surge one and pathophysiology one, and we covered cardiac and endocrine. And, um, yesterday you guys got, um, yesterday's assignment was about endocrine. You guys got the, um, recordings about the the part one and part two of common endocrine disorders that you need to know. DI and SIDA, SIADH is definitely one of them. You definitely need to know it. I'm also going to make a post about, you know, um, the difference between the two as well. Um, mm -mm -mm. And then this coming week, we're about to start maternity. So tomorrow's going to be the start of week three, which is going to be maternity slash OB. Is anybody in maternity slash OB? right now this semester is anybody in maternity and ob that's here right now i know there's a lot of people in it but who's in it um this semester okay so that's definitely what we're going to going to be covering this week everything you need to know as far as maternity to ob um oh here's another uh, little tip of advice <laughs> if you're a visual person um i recommend <laughs> Don't laugh at me, but this for real, this helped me. I recommend um, if you like watch, if you like watching like YouTube videos and stuff like that, and just watching videos, period, while you're studying med surge, I recommend watching some Grey's Anatomy episodes. Now, hear me out, hear me out, hear me out. Don't cuss me out just yet. Do not cuss me out just yet. But I recommend watching Grey's Anatomy, and here's why. Okay, don't just watch it for the drama and like the mixed steamy McDreamies, of course. But because the setting of Grey's Anatomy is at a teaching hospital, a lot of the um, the dialogue and a lot of the script is them literally saying medical facts. <laughs> you know, they're they're being asked, okay, and why is this? Like especially like for cardiac. Listen, I watched all the Yang episodes with uh, Preston Burke, Doctor Han, um, with Teddy, all that. Okay, and. Quiet as kept. That's what. That's what she aced cardio. Okay. Period. Point and the blank. But just hear them talk through the reasonings as to why certain things or why procedures had to be done or why they had, um, you know, certain signs and symptoms and what those labs could mean and what those meds could be. Don't don't take that for granted because <laughs> it definitely helped me and just kind of just hearing them say it. When I would see something about it on my test, I'm like, oh, that was an episode, uh, chap not chapter, that was in season three, episode uh, six. I remember that episode. I remember that episode. Um, so if you're a visual person, I recommend that because once again, it's a teaching hospital, the setting wise, and it really teaches. Okay. I have um, some clips already saved from at least maternity. Um to give you guys an example because y'all probably think I'm crazy but I'm gonna I'm show y'all exactly what I mean I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean I'll be like oh shit you were right Sam I want all my flowers when y'all see that I was right <laughs> um mm -mm -mm. so yeah I think I went over it I went over how you need those notes I went over how to um differentiate between a medical and a nursing diagnosis which is really important for care plans um i told you i gave you guys a 
um, a suggestion as far as uh, what best way to practice and do those practice questions. They'll, listen, those Saunders books, the online resources are amazing. And, and the best part is that you can um, filter it based on the content area. So if you just want to do like, if you just want to practice doing maturity questions, you can just do that. If you want to practice using just um, so select all that apply questions, you can do that. So whatever your weekend, the Saunders online resource is really good at helping you to strengthen those weak areas and not just have you just take a comprehensive test. They do have those, but the purpose of that is for you to strengthen the areas that you're weak in. Does that make sense? So highly, highly um, recommend that. Last month, we uh, during our giveaway, we did, um, how many people? Three people won the new edition of the NCLEX RN um, Saunders book. Um, like it was just released, like a new edition. I think it was like the ninth edition. Right? The ninth edition was just released like July 29th or something like that. And so um, um, three people from last month won new Saunders books so they can go ahead and have that steady resource in addition to mine. Like as far as what best way, best practices to study if you're a visual learner, I recommend my Ultimate Nursing School bundle, a Saunders book, and like your textbook. And whatever else you want to supplement it, hey, have at it. It's all on you. Everyone studies different. Everyone's different. But I'm going to always recommend Saunders. And I'm going to always recommend my Ultimate Nursing School bundle. Because it, it, the receipts just let y'all know what it is. <laughs> like, it's, just, it's, a good, it's a great resource, especially for visual learners. Okay? Um, so, you said, I keep feeling anxious. I need help so bad. Um... DM me. No, email me or DM me. Because I need to know just a little... I need to know a little bit more um, about that, Isidia. So DM me or um, send me an email at support at nursam.com so we can figure out what you need to do different versus what you've been doing in the past before to help get you some success. Okay. All right, um, this week, um, it's okay, boo. Uh, like I said, last week, the giveaway for last week was two Starbucks um, gift cards. I asked y'all what y'all want me to give away, and y'all said Starbucks <laughs> gift cards. So I said, okay. So I'm going to ask you again, what do y'all want for this week's um, giveaway? Do you want more Starbucks cards? Do you want... Um, do you want me to give away another one of these, the new the new versions? And then week one, we gave away a pair of fig scrubs. So for back to nursing school, I'm definitely making sure I um, help you guys transition to go back to nursing school. Um, I'm trying to make that transition as smooth as possible. And whatever that means, whether it means helping you guys out with the stethoscope, um, scrubs, IV arm, I've given out, like, in the past two months, I've probably given out over, like, a thousand dollars worth of, pri um, prizes to help you guys really hit the ground running when it comes to nursing school. Like, I, I don't just talk about it, okay? <laughs> I really, I really want to make an actionable plan <laughs> to help you guys really succeed, that means spend a little coin to making sure y'all good and y'all can save y'all coin. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do that. So, um, let me see. All right, I'm a. I'm gonna post something. I'm gonna post something to ask out what y'all want. So I have another. Somebody said a Panera or a Starbucks. Somebody said stethoscope again. Um, a new Saunders book. Fig. Three people said figs. <laughs> Not you doing better giveaways to hospitals and nursing homes, period. Because they love to give y'all them little stress balls. True story. The last stress ball I got, I threw it at the person that gave it to me. I didn't get fired, but I almost got written up. <laughs> but for real, like you, you gonna give me a stress ball? This place is a stress ball. Are you joking? But yeah. 
<laughs> if I'm going to spin my coin and make sure y'all doing something and make sure you guys are um, transitioning into uh, nursing school, I'll make sure something that y'all want. I just feel like that's gift giving 101. <laughs> Here's a cup and some socks. And I used to love them socks. Them furry socks. I'm like, oh, I used to love them socks. But you know who also got me furry socks? Like my nine-year-old, <laughs> my nine-year-old bonus son got me some socks. So step it up, hospitals. Compre <laughs> compression socks. Jim Kenny wants compression socks. Is that thing? Y'all want that? So I'm going to post something to ask you guys which y'all want. Because like I said, I'm, I'm going to ask you <laughs> if y'all are getting in i'm gonna ask y'all which i want so that's perfectly fine um the person and i'm gonna um announce the giveaway whenever the there's two starbucks giveaway cards so it's tw 25 dollars each i'm gonna announce those two winners in my stories oh we're a minute past we're three minutes past throw another pizza party if you want to <laughs> That's funny. That is funny because them pizza parties, you be complaining even though you go and you get your pizza slice. But like, I'm eating my pizza slice with an attitude and I want you to know this because do better. Do better. That is funny. Y'all are funny. All right. Mm, like I said, week three. It's annoying. <laughs> week three starts tomorrow. Um, and it's going to be maternity slash OB. I should be doing it straight to the back room with all that. <laughs> Y'all, please don't make me laugh because I'm about to laugh. Um, week three is maturity and that starts tomorrow. I'm about to give y'all all the deets in my stories. If you have not um, downloaded the app, the Nurse Sam app, make sure you do that. It is free to download. And Clix Jeopardy Mobile is exclusive to the Nurse Sam app. So if you want to play 25 new NCLEX questions weekly, make sure you uh, download that app. You can go to um, the link in my bio, go to thenursam.com or search the Nurse Sam in your app store, whether it's Apple or Google, Android, that. <laughs> it's free to download and the actual game is free to play. Free and free. 25 free and class questions every week. You cannot beat that with a stick because some of the other girls give me all like daily NCLEX questions, which is 25 or 30 NCLEX questions a month and she's giving you 25 a week. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, y'all. I'm going to let y'all go. Download the app. Subscribe to, if you haven't already, um, not subscribe, but if you haven't already registered, signed up for, um, <laughs> spicy. <laughs> if you haven't signed up for back to nursing school, you still can. Definitely do that. Um, give me guys a recap. I'm going to recap this whole week. So anything that you missed, any replays that you missed, um, it's going to be in the recap. So I'm going to save this live like I always do. Um, and then give you guys the live from Thursday of the NCLEX Jeopardy. And then give you guys what to expect for this coming week. At the, at the beginning of every week, after you look at that newsletter, the first thing you should do is take that pre-quiz. Okay, now uh, I'm, I will be sending out a post quiz for this past week. So be on the lookout for that because those post quizzes, let's see, let's see how much you learn. Let's see the difference between the pre-quiz and the post quiz. Okay, make sense? Thank you for all you do. I'll let you know if they give me a raise or gift card they're going to take out of my check anyway. Oh, Lord Jesus, please do. <laughs> please do. All right, thank you guys so much and I will see y'all next time. Bye. Have a good night.